This is FYI on your TV brought to you by Hometown News. I'm Kathy Botham. I have got Constable Aaron Tompkins from our Smith Falls Police Department back with us to do our monthly update. Thank you very much, Aaron. Again, thanks for having me. Always a pleasure. Now, you received a, a, a very nice grant of $141,000. Can you talk about that? Yeah, so we were uh, successful. I'd like to say uh, we did a lot of hard work into that grant. And uh, what it is, it's at the provincial level. So we, uh, policing municipalities, uh, cities across Ontario get to apply. And uh, we were selected. We were one of the only municipal police forces uh, or police services to receive the grant. And uh, what that enables us to do is our mobile crisis response uh, team, so MCERT, which is that uh, partnership with Lanark County Mental Health. We have uh, a team now is going to be four, so two social workers and two uh, nurses. So if there's a, a person in distress, um, and, and we also include substance abuse in there as well as part of that um, response, we have uh, team members that can go company with police and uh, have that immediate response. And the most important thing, so we have that immediate, but then we also have that follow-up. So that person isn't just getting left behind or they're waiting and waiting and waiting. So it, it's, it really is uh, a great process and that extra team member is gonna be amazing for a few years, so. And you spoke about that here too, as well too, like when you arrive on a scene of something to have that extra support there and it's not just all the police officers to the person that you're coming to support, uh, it means a world of difference sometimes. So to me, as a police officer, if I'm responding to a call, there's nothing better than having a medical professional that can make that assessment on scene. Um, police officers, as you know, we, we do tend to wear many hats um, and we're not experts in many of these fields. So if we can have an expert out, that, that's a best case scenario for our community, for the person in, uh, in crisis and that follow up piece as well. So they're not... Um, they're not in that waiting period. So there's always that interaction with a mental health agency worker until they get engaged with uh, whatever services they need. So that's that's the whole premise of the model is uh, not to lose contact and to have less um, less repeat um, persons in crisis. And that's that's we've proven that it does work that way. Excellent, excellent. Now you've been busy doing some uh, presentations on fraud, making people aware of what fraud is. Yeah, so we partnered up with uh, Leonard County Victim Services and uh, did some co-presentations with, uh, with them. Amazing, amazing uh, groups that we did deliver to. Uh, did some in-person and some virtual. And uh, so just let everybody know we are getting back to that in-person model, which is great. Um, but again, it's just that reminder. Um, I, and I can't remember the exact percentage, but uh, I know it, it spiked from 2020 to 2021. We had like a, a a 20% increase in the amount of victims in Canada for frauds. And the number was uh, like around $379 million. But the even more scary statistic in there is uh, only like less than 10%. I think it's around 6% of victims actually report being victims of fraud. So that 379 million equates to billions of dollars um, that we know is, is out there. So and they're they're so sneaky about it too and like this time of year too like right now we've got income tax so they can be you know telling you click here to get your income tax whatever they do and also with the the license sticker refund that, that seems mm -hmm. to be a, a big one right now too it's like here you go click on here or do this to get it it's they're very manipulative for sure yeah and that's uh, that's often how they work is uh, if there's a, a government announcement uh, announcement of any significance they jump on that right away and uh, again, they're, they, that's, they have to be proactive, just as, as well as us uh, in the policing, the law enforcement, uh, our community, our media partners, we all have to be aware. And that's uh, one of the big key messages that we, uh, we do say to uh, anyone we, we present to is uh, talk about it. If you hear something, hey, Kathy, did you hear this? Or I got this weird text. Uh, and Kathy, you may have got that last night and said, oh, I heard from another friend. Don't hit that. Um, they're going to access your, your banking information or uh, no, I was told that the rebate checks are going to come by mail. Government wants to make sure your address is correct. That way they can uh, send you a check. So uh, again, it's all about talking uh, and spreading that awareness. And uh, more importantly, if you are a victim of a, a fraud or a scam, uh, don't be afraid to tell others about it. Um, it it's hard to do, I know. However, that uh, the only way we're going to reduce that 379 million is uh, by doing that. That's right. And we, we talk about it all the time here, but we have to because it's still out there. We, we've talked about people having to buy, you know, 
hundreds and hundreds of dollars of gift cards. Mm -hmm. You don't have to pay for anything with gift cards. No, and that uh, seems to be a common one because it's instantaneous. They get the little numbers off the back of the card and they have full access to that uh, account balance, whatever it is, and it, it's untraceable at that point. So um, be very, very cautious. And again, we've been to the retailers. Uh, we'll have to do another circuit again just to uh, the retailers out in our community, just saying, hey, be mindful of this. And you know what's scary too, Aaron, and you, you made mention of it too, is that what, what is the statistic? 6% of people have reported it. That means 94% of people have not. Yeah, and I did the math and my calculator like almost exploded. It was like billions of dollars in, in one year. Yeah, sad, sad. Well, on a better note, though, uh, Smith Falls, as uh, the, our town and uh, Lanark County Interval House, and as well as you, have uh, teamed up and we're going to be putting out a public mosaic. Yeah, so very excited to partner up with uh, Lanark County Interval House. Um, so they're already uh, in existence in Carlton Place and Mississippi Mills, and they're close to their town halls. And uh, it's just a nice way to have that memoriam for gender-based violence in our community. So again, it's not a topic we like to talk about, but we need to talk about it to make a difference. Um, that's, again, having those communication lines, that public education, um, that knowledge that these crimes do exist is the only way we're going to reduce them and uh, let our community know that it's not okay. And these uh, crimes against uh, victims are, are not okay and not acceptable. But, uh, and then we remember the ones that uh, unfortunately have had them, uh, crimes against them, so. That's right. Now we've had uh, Erin Lee here, the executive director from Lanark County Interval House, and, and uh, she spoke about the mosaics that they put up in Carlton Place and uh, Elmont. And is it Elmont? Did they have yes. The, yes, they have the other one. They're just beautiful. It's a community project. Like they're going to be asking for people, you know, for some ideas of, of what they want it to look like and then putting it together too. It's such a community uh, event too. So it's, it's, it's wonderful to participate with. Yeah, exactly. So we'll, uh, we'll be sharing that, um, that timeline as uh, dates firm up. And that, that's exactly it. It's a community-based project. We want people involved from our community. Um, and the nice thing that I didn't know is every mosaic is catered to our, our town, our city, our municipalities. Um, ours won't look the same as Crown Place. It won't look the same as uh, Mississippi Mills or Almonds. Uh, there's another one up in Renfrew. So everyone is different and it's catered towards our heritage, our roots, uh, what makes this our town and what people love about our town. So that was really interesting to, uh, to note. And then the, um, I think the unveiling of the finished product that's going to be early September so I'm excited about that. So when you start hearing words about it I encourage people to to be involved because it is it's going to be our towns and you'll have input on what it's going to look like. Exactly. That's right that's right. Now I saw uh, that you did a presentation to our Chimo students that was so nice to see uh, it, you were doing online safety but it was so nice to see that you're back in the classrooms. Yeah so again uh, virtual platform it has its perks and it has its uh, advantages. We're able to uh, deliver in two hours to three different sets of grade or age groups. And uh, in two hours, we had the whole school um, age specific towards um, certain ages on online safety and video games. And we, we incorporated a bit of fraud in there because people do get scammed in these video games. So, uh, but more importantly, um, it was the parents. They wanted uh, information session as well. So. Again, we partnered up with Victim Services, um, did a great job with that uh, presentation and uh, taught our, our, our parents of these students how to be safe, how to lock down their kids' accounts, um, what to look for. And the biggest thing that we, we try to drive home is that communication piece. So you can see it's a constant uh, or common theme in everything is, is talking about stuff, right? And that's the only way hey, what is my child interested in? I like this game, dad. So you know what? Me as a dad, I'm going to look at this game. I'm going to play the game. Uh, is there an online chat? What's the conversations that are being in the chat, whether it be a, a voice or a type chat? And just to get a feel for the game. And uh, when my kids were smaller, I, I played a lot of the same games just for that purpose, to know what they were uh, experiencing in, in that setting. That's right. I mean, just because a child can't read, doesn't mean there's not somebody on there that could be talking to them. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, what we're finding is uh, five years ago when I stepped into this role, it was like more targeting the grade seven and eights. But now we're starting at grade one because um, as 
life progresses and our, our digital world uh, progresses, um, kids are getting these devices at an early age, or they might be getting the hand-me-downs now from their older siblings. So that's right. That's right. And like so often, Bryson, my grandson, who's eight years old, I can hear him talking to his friends, and I'll I'll hear them say, I, "My parents won't let me be on the chat. My parents won't let me be on the chat." And Bryson's not allowed on chats either. So it's so nice to hear that other kids that he's talking to are not allowed on the chats talking to strangers. Exactly, because yeah. as we know, there's a lot of uh, bad people out on the internet. So again, we don't try and scare the, the kids or parents. We just, uh, we have to bring that to light because uh, it is out there. And uh, if you're not cautious and not know what to look for, uh, you, you could be an easy target. That's right, that's right. Well, I need to wrap this up and I, with, with uh, congratulating you, Aaron, you were nominated for the Police Association of Ontario for a Police Services Hero of the Year Award in March. Yeah, so again, uh, thank you to my anonymous donor or uh, um, the person that wrote the, the nice thing up uh, and for taking that time. So again, just a, a nice community collaboration um, for that nomination. And uh, just to know that you've made a small difference in a, either a group, community group, or somebody that you've interacted with uh, as police officers, uh, we don't hear it often. So uh, again, just a big thank you for, from me and uh, all of our coworkers here, because we have an amazing team and uh, we do a lot of amazing work in our community. So uh, it's not just me, it's just one nomination, but uh, behind me is a whole team of uh, similar uh, type personalities and people that love our community, so. Yeah, and you always say that too. It's all about the team, Aaron, you always say that. I appreciate yeah, that. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Is there anything you'd like to say before we wrap up? I uh, just want to remind people the nice weather is here. So our officers uh, are gonna be out checking for seat belts and more importantly, um, child restraint seats, just to make sure that they are uh, in the proper seat. And uh, that's that's the whole month of April. So if you get stopped by a police officer, uh, chances are that's what we're gonna be looking for. That's right, and be mindful, we're doing a bit of uh, construction downtown too. Yeah, and uh, just be patient with it. Uh, as we know, last uh, last year we had the, the big version of it. So this is phase two, it's a, it's a much more condensed area. So uh, we can get around, still use most of the downtown core and uh, just take advantage. It's going to look beautiful when it's done as uh, the, the first phase looks great. So. Excellent. It does for sure. It's all going to just meld together too. So it's going to be wonderful. Thank you very much for joining us, Constable Police, uh, Police Constable Aaron Tompkins from our Smith Falls Police Department, our Community Service Officer. Thank you for joining us again this month. We look forward to talking to you again in a few weeks. Excellent. And uh, as always, thanks for having me and uh, great partnership. Thank you.